Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Glory and honor be to your name in Jesus' name. Thank you for bringing us here to learn at your feet. And I pray, Lord God, you, the teacher of teachers, the minister of ministers, the leader of leaders, Lord, I pray you will lead us, you will teach us this morning in Jesus' name. All that we need us to hear, to learn, that will make our lives to be in tune with you. Lord, I pray you will grant unto us in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, I pray we will not be the teacher alone, we will not be the hearer alone, but we will be the doers of your word. That at the end, O oh Lord, God will rise with you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering us. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Can somebody remind us of the topic we have today? We'll find out that we exalted our side the scripture, so we have a special lesson. And uh, the topic we are having today is sanctification, a definite Christian experience. Sanctification, a definite Christian experience. Shall we all say this together? Sanctification is so important in the life of a Christian that it takes us to higher ground as we sang today. And I pray that all of us will get to the higher ground in Jesus' name. Our memory verse is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse Deuteronomy thirty and first six. Shall we all read it together? One to go. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart. And the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul that lay. What God is dealing with us is asking from us about sanctification is our heart. Remember, the Bible te teaches us that we are the temple of God. We say all the time, Oh, let's go to church. Let's go to church. Yes, it's good to assemble in a physical building. But the physical building itself cannot be holy if the people that worship there, they are not holy. So God is dealing with us in our heart. That this, our heart, is where God dwells with. And I know God you, knows you and me better than even you know yourself. I pray at the end of the lesson today that Lord will tune our heart, our spirit, our body to the frequency that we listen and we hear from him in Jesus' name. We will read a couple of uh, our texts. Thessalonians chapter 4 and the New Testament. We are going to read Verses 3, 4, 7, and 8. First Thessalonians. Anyone who sees it? First. For this is the will of God even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, verse 7 and 8. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despised, despised not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. 
praise the Lord. We see that God is talking about our heart here as our colors into holiness and into righteousness. We also read uh, chapter 5 of the same Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. It's in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23-24. Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. And they, the very God of peace, sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Praise the Lord. God has called us unto holiness. And like I mentioned before, that it is good that we come, we appear before God uh, as a body. But we may be sitting here at home or anywhere, and our heart may be somewhere. That is why God is dealing with that, our heart. If we just come, we sing, we dance, without this, our heart, being in tune with God, all the services, all the gifts, all the tithes, all the offerings, they are in vain. But I pray it will not be in vain in Jesus' name. If you look at in the first Peter chapter 1, 14 to 16, the same thing is talking about that we must present ourselves holy. And as the Bible tells us, we are the temple of God. And that's what the Bible is was telling us. That the he that commits fornication, you are not sinning against God alone, but you are even sinning against your own body. It's just like when we say conscience. When you did something, that conscience will be troubling you. I remember in 1989, precisely, uh, a friend cooked certain things to go to London, and he pulled me with it. He put my name in it. And then, John, I want to see you. I said, okay. The visa to London. He used me as secretary of his company. It's a real company. And they said, uh, the uh, embassy in London, he gave that paper to him, the letter, that I do not need appointment. I should come and pick up my visa. I said, hey. ah. I said, thank you. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. You remember those days when you are going abroad, uh, God has answered your prayer. I prayed and I did not see my prayer going through the ceiling. About a week later, I said, I'm not going. Eh? You are a fanatic. You are, they call me different names. I said, wherever God wants to take me. Why? I said, my conscience will not allow me. Six months pizza. One day, six months will be tomorrow. Am I right? I said, I'm not going. And guess what? He went to London. Uh, I mean, he, went, he came to America, and he has a lot of problems. But when God now opens the door, I walk into America because I came through the lottery visa. Praise the Lord. What am I saying? That, that conscience in you as a child of God. But I pray God will turn our conscience in Jesus' name. When we talk of this sanctification, a definite experience in a Christian life. First of all, the, the thing God requires from us is to be born again, to be a Christian. You cannot be sanctified without being born again, being a Christian. But it's like when you cut a tree, that tree, you fell down, you cut the tree, the leaves and everything. But it, there's still the root, the stump right there. Uh, I saw it yeah, somewhere yesterday to chop the root or the stump of a tree. If you don't take that root, if you don't, the stump, if you don't take it, it might sprout again. Am I right? So, the, the work of sanctification in the Christian life is to take that root of sin. Remember, we were born in sin. 
Is that true? We are born in sin. And now we grow in sin. When we come to Jesus Christ, then he wants to take us to a higher ground that we have it today. That higher ground is the sanctification. So that the root of sin, Adamic nature that is in you, that is in me, when God walk on it, then you become sanctified. That is why he's telling us that we should be immune. The only thing that can give that immunization against sin, to be dead to sin, is the Spirit of God. As we desire it, God will grant unto us in Jesus' name. Remember, salvation is free, but sanctification is something you must desire. It's something you must ask for. Just like the job you have, they didn't call you at home and say, we get a job for you. You, you go out. You look for a job, you apply for it. So, sanctification is the thing we require, we re request, and we pray for. And God will lead us to that level in Jesus' name. So, the root of sin in our lives, because there's tendency to go back. Remember when we go out you, in your workplace, is it only the Life members? Is it only Christians? No. We still, these people, we hear them. There's tendency for us to want to try it again. But when the Spirit of God dwells in you, your heart has been circumcised. You will not yield to sin in Jesus' name. There's a question. Mention some misconceptions that people have today about subject of sanctification and state the proper view. How do people regard sanctification today? What do they think sanctification is in the life of a Christian? How do, how do they interpret it? Sanctification. <coughs> Salvation. Sanctification. What are those misconceptions people say? Number one, Nobody, anybody wants to contribute? Yes, sir, bro. Sanctification is considered holiness. People okay. feel that we cannot be holy. Okay. So uh, it's a difficult thing. Another thing is that uh, it is a growing experience. You grow into it. Rather, you don't uh, have it instantaneously. Okay. Praise the Lord. People say, we cannot be holy, we cannot be sanctified. But we thank God. God will not ask us to ask for something he cannot do. He said, ask, knock, and seek. It shall be given unto us. So if it is impossible for us to be holy, to be sanctified, God will not ask us to seek for it. And I pray God will give us the grace to ask for it, to desire it in Jesus' name. And any other misconception? Yes. Thank you, sir. Sanctification is the removal of the Adamic nature from man. And uh, that comes after salvation experience. But there's a misconception where that people go with that the moment you are saved, the first instant that you are saved forever. But that tendency to go back to the world is natural and has to be uprooted. Okay. So, and that comes by the grace of God, and by, the, uh, uh, by the power of God. Praise the Lord. Let me ask, sanctification, does it have to do with the type of dress we put on? Because people say, once you dress, you put tie. Or, I come to teach. Does that mean that is sanctification? My wife was telling me a story when we were teaching at home. She said there's a particular church. When they take their dress to tailor, and then after they got it from the tailor, before they put it on, they take it to all the altar to sanctify the, the clothes. But the people that are wearing that clothes themselves, they leave the church, they go back to their sin. Praise the Lord. So it is God. And like Abraham said, that Adamic nature must be uprooted and to be operated in Jesus' name. Some people, they have the concern, misconception. Food. 
they forbid starting food. That don't eat this, don't eat that. I was eat, uh, eating a fruit back in Nigeria. Oh, you call yourself a Christian. You say you are holy. I say yes. Why are you eating that one? I say, God has sanctified it. And there is not forbidden. Praise the Lord. And then people now they, uh, believe that you should not wear particular color. There are some churches, if you ask, they are holy, but they don't wear anything black. Or anything red. But if we thank God that God Himself has said He sanctifies us, we will. You cannot move, you cannot be in tune with God. Therefore, it is important for us to be holy, to be sanctified, and God will do that for us in Jesus' name. What is the relevance of um, sanctification in the, in the life of a man? I say, why is this sanctification an indispensable Christian experience for every believer? Why is it so important? For you, for me, to be sanctified. is because God commands it. God required it. God says, you must be holy. Be ye perfect, for I am perfect. Be ye holy, for I am holy. If you are not holy, if you are not perfect, you will be outside the circle. But you will be in the circle in Jesus' name. And it is God that helps us. And we will do it in Jesus' name. And then, mention some Bible characters that show traits of unsatisfied life and the challenges their lives pose to present day. There are some people in the Bible, here yeah, they work with God, but at the same time, they were not sanctified. Do we remember any of them? Look at Abraham. Look at, sometimes, go for, yeah, we call him a friend of God. But when the wife says, do this, he did not check with the God. He quickly fell in line. But when he became sanctified, and God now he walked with the God. And uh, you see other people. I put a question of my own. At what age sanctification is given to man that we should requ request for it? At what age we should ask for sanctification? Is it when we are married? Or when we are graduated, or when we get to 50, 60 years of age, at what age sanctification is necessary in the Christian life? Yes, sir? But at any time someone is born again, the next experience is sanctification, whether a youth, adult, at any age. Praise the Lord. Uh, in the review, I will impress our person that to take the review to impress this on our youth. Because my children, when we're doing Bible study or prayer meeting, they walk around. And this is not just for uh, seniors or parents alone. Even in the church, God forbid, when we were having that long bench in the, before this chair, Pastor that I was there who let us pray. I stood up. The youth there, they were drawing. The, the, what they drew, I wept. They drew boy girl, they match it together, they were passing. Hey, they were, I cried. What am I saying is that at any age, who was that person at the age of twelve? God used him in the Bible. God called him. Is that Isaac? Is it, is that just that? So, there's no age limit. Whether you are youth, young adult, or as old as uh, our father is, when we desire it, God will give unto us in Jesus' name. And now, provision for and possession of sanctification. God has made it available. 
How do we get it? Is it we just go to the supermarket and buy it? How can we get sanctified? Well, yeah, are when desired by prayer, yes. But Jesus Christ, he says, sanctify them by what? By the truth, by the word, because the word is truth. That's why the Bible tells uh, tell us that we should study. Bible didn't say we should read. There's difference between reading and study. I was teaching my children at home. He said, Daddy, all these things you are teaching us, we didn't know them. No teacher. How long did you? I said, This one. This one is who I studied by myself, not even the school, in 1978. You still remember it? I said, Yes, because I studied it. My point, there's difference between study. That's why the Bible says, study to be a word, to be approved. So when we study the word, we'll be approved and we'll be approved in Jesus' name. The prov uh, the, to possess it, again, the provision of it is through the, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that the blood has been shed for the remission of what? Of sin. All unrighteousness. And it will be wiped out of our sin. Uh, life in Jesus' name. And another provision of it to possess it is through the Spirit of God. Remember, we have the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is not by power, not by might, but what? By the Spirit, says the Lord. It's not a thing that I can struggle with and get it. But when I desire it, you desire it, God will sanctify and circumcise your heart in Jesus' name. As we close in, there's somebody in the Bible that he desired it and prayed for it. When you look at his life, so we are going to look at our life. In the book of Psalm, Psalm 51, probably that will be our um, prayer to close this blessing today. Psalm 51, David prayed about it. Let's look at 51 verses 7. He said, purge me with a crimson, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. And then in verse 10, create in me a clean heart. Remember, we'll be talking about our heart. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. We just mentioned about the spirit. And give me a right spirit in me. Without the spirit of God, without our heart being recreated, being regenerated, being renewed, being in tune with God, all that we do will be of the circle, but will be in the camp of God in Jesus' name. So, brethren, sanctification is a necessity in the life of a man. Otherwise, we can easily sl slide back into the world. Because, like I said at the beginning, temptation is all over the place, everywhere. But you, when you are sanctified, the Lord will keep you and will keep you in Jesus' name. God will create a new heart in us it will regenerate us. It will circumcise our heart so that the whole thing in our lives will pass away and will be with God in Jesus' name. Shall we bow down our heads and ask God, Lord, create in me, Brother John, create in me, O oh Lord, a new heart today. I'm asking for sanctification. I need your word. I need your spirit. I need your power. It's not by title. It's not by position. It's not by what I give. It's not by what I do. But it's what God wants me. The standard God wants me to be. The higher ground. Because he's desiring that we should not be at the lower level. Or to be at the higher level. Lord, lift me up. Lift my family. Lift our church up, oh Lord. To a higher ground. And he will do it.
let us round up in all our classes, the youth, the young adults. the youth, we are waiting. Hi, good morning, Josh. Um, our study today is a very, very important uh, study, um, which is like uh, somebody in school, and you walk into a class of your major course, that if you don't pass this particular course, you will not graduate. That is what sanctification is. Sanctification is very, very important. It's an experience that you must have after being born again. You are born again, you are a Christian, your name has to be written in the book of life. But it may take time. Our case may, all our case may not be like that thief on the cross who became born again at the point of his death. If it happened to any of us, I can say, thank God, we don't need to go through the trouble of this life. But we are born again. We still have to pass through. Maybe somebody born again at the age of 20, and you have to live for 100 years. So you have 80 years to pass through this world of sin, going to work, coming back, doing everything, and live holy. So being born again, you may not be able to make heaven if you just want to rely on being born on sanctification. So you need something that will carry you through that when the troubles of life is hitting you, there must be something that will help you to stand in the time of temptation, in the time of trouble, and that is why sanctification is very, very important. It's an essential, very important aspect of Christianity that we must have. So we, uh, our brother taught us that after being born again, this sanctification may not be automatic. You have to ask God that, God, I want this. You have to desire it. You have to say, God, I want to be sanctified. You are born again. There are still sin in your life inside you that is still showing you that with what I'm going through now, I may not be able to make heaven. Therefore, you need to ask God, God, I need to be sanctified. And um, before I move further, let me give opportunity to if anyone has questions regarding this study of sanctification or being pure in our hearts. Okay. No question. So, like, I want to move further. We must be sanctified. We must be holy. Let's look at the book of Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14. So the Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see that. You are in school. You are taking all these classes. So if you fail this very class, you may not graduate. So that Bible says, without holiness, without passing this very course, there's no way for you to get to heaven. Therefore, we must be holy. We must be sanctified. Some people may just settle within themselves that, okay, all I need is just to get to heaven. I may not even need a crown. Let me just get there. When I'm, when I'm there, I'm okay. I don't need all this crown. No, let me just step on that street of gold. Now, let us just imagine. You are in school, and uh, you are getting C. And you know that if you get D, you will not graduate, you will not pass. But in all the exams, you are just getting C. And you say, well, if I can just get C, I, I will be okay. But remember, the one they call the last exam, you always carry higher mark. That means if you just fail that, just that one, you may be dropped to D. So that is why you have to aspire that let me get A. If anything happens, 
drop me to B, I will still graduate. So if you are a Christian, you are just satisfied with being born again. You are just okay with that. You are just like somebody that is getting C. So at the end of the day, maybe when you take your final exam and you fail the final exam, then you drop to D, then you fail and you will not make heaven. So therefore, my brethren, we need to ask for this. It is an essential experience. And it's something we must have before we can get to heaven. And they said many people have misconceptions about this uh, sanctification. Some said it is not even possible. How can somebody live in this world without committing sin? How can somebody live in this world and be sanctified? They said it's not possible. Some say something gradual, we just have to grow into it. Some said when you are born again, you are already sanctified. I always, let me just give personal example. A brother called, told me, say, well, I like the way you give your personal example. Let me give you a personal example. And uh, I will go back to when I first became born again. I got born again, just like Paul the Apostle. Nobody preached the message to me. The Holy Spirit came, uh, uh, descended on me, and I became born again. So in those days, when, and we had the message of being sanctified, sanctification. We pray and pray and pray. I pray, I did everything. But they said this thing, you have to know that this thing has happened, but I didn't see anything. I've tried and tried. So I now became one of these people that have this misconception about uh, being sanctified. So after being, I prayed so many times, and I said, today, Lord, I've tried. I'm, I'm sanctified. I, that day, I just consider myself being sanctified. I said, all I need to do is just to wash everything I do. Keep to holiness. Everything I do, when I talk. So I sanctified myself that day, and uh, not knowing that God himself was just looking at my action. So that day, it was back in my country. Uh, that, in, those, in that place, we used to enter bus. We are going to a particular, you enter bus, there is a bus conductor, there is a driver. So that morning, I woke up, I said, I'm sanctified. I wash everything I do. Anybody that talks to me, I look straight, I look down, I know, a sanctified believer. So I entered this bus. We were going from a particular place to another place. So you pay the driver, driver gives you change. So that day, I made my own payment, and I asked the driver, the conductor, please give me my change. He said, I should stand by. So, and I was, I said, oh, I don't even need to argue with this guy. I'm a sanctified man. I just took my, took my time. I, 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 I didn't, no argument. So, the bus kept going. I, let, I asked him again, what about my change? No, 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 just don't worry, I will give it to you. And I kept to myself. And I saw this same man giving change to other people. Other people gave him money, and he was giving them their, their, their change. Why about me? He did never give it to me. I asked again, he said, and I saw the money in his hand that he's supposed to give me. Not only that God himself was testing me. So I still kept to myself, sanctified man, no, no sin. No. So we kept going. We now go to the bus stop. I asked this man again, everybody coming down, where is my change? And the master looked at me. I didn't know what came on me. I heard his hand, where is my change? Where is my change? So at that point, the Spirit of God asked me, are you sanctified? I now look at myself. I say, if I'm not even sure if I'm born again at this time because the born again, the sanctification it was, it was even doubtful. So that is why misconception. Let God sanctify you. You can't sanctify yourself. You, you, you have to let it come from the Holy Spirit. It has to come from the Holy Spirit. And when you are sanctified, everything in you, the holiness will just be there. And many people that have said they are born again, let me just say, this is my brother. If he's celebrating something and he invites everybody without giving me an invitation, as a sanctified man, I supposed to just bro, I had your daughter graduate. And many people in the church were there. You didn't invite me. The brother can explain to me. But do you know what many of us do? Oh, okay. We have to it's good. We have to play, we have to play the game. Whenever I'm doing something, I'm inviting people. What will I do? I won't invite him. It will be one one. It's happening. It is happening. So, we, we just being sanctified. That spirit has to be in you. Anything you are doing wrong, the spirit of God will let you know. Somebody walk, we are, we are working on this, or maybe a member. As we are walking and uh, uh, meeting each other, the brother just walk away without greeting you. Oh, this brother didn't greet me. Then you, you pay him back. Not even knowing. He, there may be something in his heart. He may not, we may see somebody, you may be looking at someone like this. It may, be, it may not be seeing you because of what it may just be looking at this and you, you take offense. But if you're a child of God, the Spirit of God will let you know, go to him and ask, bro, 
I saw you didn't even greet me. If you say, I didn't even know that I've, I, I saw you. There was a guy, not even a member of, of the church. I was in our working place, a particular office that I was. Sometimes the stress can be so much, the workload can be so much that people, we, we won't even know somebody uh, is in front of you. This individual, he came, he saw me, he greeted me, I didn't answer, not knowing I was so busy. And he has been walking away from me. So one day he came and he got called me that this is what happened. I said, you know, I never even, I said, naturally, I cannot see somebody who agree and I will, you know, you have never done anything to me. That was how I explained to him. And that is why it's supposed to be. If somebody has, you think somebody has ignored you, call that person. Let him exp explain to him. Has this one, I, 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 have I done anything to you? We can be calling each other each time and settle fight between, we are sanctified that spirit will not allow you even to keep Mali. Praise the Lord. And let us now look at our life. Is it possible for, we, for us to even live completely without committing sins? There are things, John, let's look at the book of uh, First John, chapter 2. Let me read from verse 1. John was addressing believers, not unbelievers. John said, my little children, this thing write I unto you that ye sin not. Do not commit sin. You are a child of God. You are born again. You are sanctified Christian. Who want to go to heaven? John said, Do not commit sin. But he now said, And if any man sin, you can make a mistake. That you make a mistake will not condemn you and make you go to heaven, to hell. He said, And if any man sin, if you have made any mistake, John said, We still have what? An advocate with our Father, our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. He will still plead on your behalf. He, you, he, 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 uh, do not allow the devil to condemn you completely that you are, not, you are no longer a child of God for your mistake. John said, we still have an advocate with our father. But let's now go further and say, let's read the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Hebrews 10. Verse 26. And this place said, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. If you now sin willfully, you know this thing is wrong. The Holy Spirit is telling you this thing is not right. But you just choose to do it. You still want to go ahead into it. Then the Bible is now telling you there's no more. You have uh, you have willfully, intentionally commit sin. But John said, and if any man sin, if, probability, probably, you made a mistake, something happened, we still have an advocate with our father. So we now have to examine ourselves. Examine yourself. In what area, in which area, am I doing things that are contrary to the will of God? Let us examine ourselves. Like I said earlier, the, this uh, message of sanctification is very, very important. We must be sanctified. We must be holy. We must live a righteous life. We, our life must be different to the life of those people out there. There are many religions, many teachings out today. The Jehovah Witness will come to you and said, yeah, eh, you know, when you see them, they, 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 they look holy. There are things they will do, they say, but they cannot, they are, that spirit of God is not in them. When I was an unbeliever, I was working in a particular place in those days. There was this lady, a Jehovah Witness. I wasn't born again. Our boss said, go to a particular place to go and sell something. He wanted, he wanted us to go and sell something. So I walked with this Jehovah Witness lady, and I told her, I said, I need to make money. They said, we should go with a bus. I said, we are go or with a taxi. I said, we are going to go with a bus, and we won't go with a taxi. So the difference between the money to pay for the bus and the, the taxi, we have to keep it and share it within ourselves. She said, no, 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 no. I'm a holy woman, I'm a Jehovah witness, I don't partake in that. I said, okay, you can't, I will take the money. You are holy. She agreed to that. And we went, we, we, the difference, I kept it to, me, to myself. Our boss called us, what happened? Which, what, which, what type of transaction did you take? I said, we took the boss, not the, and they asked her, and she supported me. But she didn't take from the money. That is the difference between us and the people out there. They are not, they don't have the spirit of God in them. If you have that spirit in you, it is total holiness. 
you have to live totally, completely above sin. The sin you will commit will be something that is unknown to you. And the John said, we have an advocate. So you have to live completely above sin. So at work, if there is somebody that is making life miserable to you, instead of you to have hatred in your heart, pray for that individual. Because the spirit behind her or him bring that thing to you is the spirit you are, you are battling with. Because the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So those people you call your enemy, there are a principality, there are power above uh, behind them that you need to fight with, not them. And when they become born again, when they become born again, they are coming to apologize to, or to, uh, to apologize to you. And all of us we come together and make heaven eventually. So look at your heart. In what area am I doing things that are contrary to the will of God? And God will help every one of us in Jesus' name. Let us close our eyes and thank the Lord for what we have had. Check your life. If you are not sanctified, pray for sanctification. If you are sanctified but you are not yet been baptized with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, pray that God Himself will baptize you with that Spirit. It's an essential experience, important experience that all of us must have. And I pray that God will give it unto us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just be on our feet this morning as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Let's just come before his presence this morning and just give him praise, give him honor, worship his holy name. Uh, the set of scriptures that we had this morning is about sanctification, about holiness, and about changing our lives to please God. Let's just come before his presence. The Bible says that blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. So just come before the presence of God today and tell him, go before his presence, stand before your, your father, your king of kings, and just tell him that you are longing for him. Just tell him how much you want him. Tell him how desperate you are to receive him this morning. Let's just, just tell him that. Hallelujah.
just give him praise for he is holy. He is holy. He is holy. He is holy. Let's just worship him. Tell him how great he is. Tell him that he is the only one in your life. Let's just give him praise. Give him honor. Let's just tell him that it's only him. Nobody else but him. Just worship his name this morning, Lord. Let's just give him praise. Give him honor. Father, we worship you. With open hearts, we worship you. With our hands lifted high, we worship you. Thank you, King of Kings. Father, we worship you, Jesus. Just lift up your hands as we worship King of Kings. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Give him praise. Open your hearts this morning and just worship him. Tell him he is great. He is mighty. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, King of glory. We worship you in chance of days. Hallowed be your name, Jesus. Hallowed be your name. Hands up, hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high, we lift you high, hands up, hearts open wide as we cry, God we lift your name high, hands up.
the most beautiful amongst thousands and thousands my beloved is the most wonderful among millions and billions and thousands my beloved the most wonderful amongst thousands and thousands my be Thousands and thousands and thousands sing my beloved. My beloved is the most beautiful. The most beautiful. Among thousands and thousands is the most beautiful. Thousands, 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 thousands
his presence and sing let all the other names fade away till there's only you let all the other names fade away sing let them fade away till it's only you let all the other names fade away is his name let's praise him this morning psalms chapter 115 verse 17 tells us that the dead cannot praise the lord for you to be alive is enough reason to give god some praise this morning yeshua is his name jesus the son of god jesus of nazareth Yeshua, Jehovah, the Savior, Savior 
is his name. Jesus, because he shall save his people from their sins. Let's praise him this morning. Because he has given us that offer to walk into the kingdom of God. Through the grace that was made available through his sacrificial death on that cross of Calvary. Let's honor him. Let's worship him. Because if he had not come, I don't know what would have been our situation today. Thank him. Exalt his name this morning. Worship him, the King of glory. Let's lift his name higher. Let's lift his name higher. Because the dead, they cannot praise God. You want to worship him because you are not in the mortuary, but in the sanctuary this morning. Let's give him the praise. Say, Lord, I lift your name higher. We bless your name, Yeshua. Jesus, the Son of God, the King of glory, who has made the grace available for us. And let's use this opportunity to lift up our regional overseer, Pastor Michael Dada, onto that throne of grace, that the grace of God will continue to be multiplied upon his ministry. That righteousness will speak as he ministers. Yes, the Lord will make him a flame of fire indeed. To consume the presence of the enemy. And that the Lord will bless his ministry with souls such as should be saved. Let's also pray for all the pastors, all the ministers working with him that the mighty hands of God will rest upon them. And you also want to pray for yourself that this labor over us will not be in vain. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome to the Sunday worship service this morning. And this is Deeper Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C. On behalf of our pastor, I want to welcome everybody here to the presence of God. And I know you're having a good time, isn't it? The Lord is doing something great in somebody's life this morning. So before we proceed, we want to quickly welcome those that are worshiping with us for the first time. If you are here today, it's your first time fellowship with us. Could you please signify by raising your hand so that we can bring warm greetings to you this morning. Amen. If you wouldn't mind, I just want you to take a step further by rising on your feet so we can bring you warm greetings from our pastor this morning. Please. I welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. We can see all over you.
my friends, for coming today. We are highly delighted to have you here in our midst. You can see how the people are excited trying to give you that warm welcome there. So we just want to do one more thing, if you wouldn't mind. Just, there's a microphone behind you. You grab the microphone and let's have your name. Thank you very much, Mary, for coming. We have, okay. First of all, I apologize for my sitting down because the, the baby is disturbing. Um, but my name is Testy. Um, I live in Maryland and I came under the Jehovah Mothers for the child dedication. Praise the Lord. Yeah, welcome to the presence of God. My name is Etris, and uh, it's good to be here, and um, uh, I'm new here, and uh, I, I joined another church, uh, Seventh-day Adventist church, and I was baptized in another church, uh, two churches, and, uh, and, and that's all I can say. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for coming this morning, and we're happy that you are here, and uh, we hope and pray that this fellowship will continue. And God has brought you here to plant your feet on a solid rock. That feet will be firmly fixed on the rock. And um, we just want to let you know that you have to come with us, because our Lord will do you good. And as you continue in this fellowship, something great will definitely continue to happen in your life in Jesus' name. Then we have one more um, person that uh, maybe we just want to recognize. Um, he or she did not raise the hand while we are welcoming newcomers. So brothers and sisters, I want us to join me to welcome baby uh, Tanfon. Yes, at the back, Sister Siri, just raise your hand for the baby there. Yeah, we can see you. Yeah, they are here today. The young uh, baby is here, coming with us for the first time. And the Lord will definitely do something great in her life in Jesus' name. Media, over to you. Thank you. Happy Sunday and welcome to church. This is Deep Life Bible Church, Washington, D.C. And we're so glad you fellowshiped with us today. Listen up as we share what we have coming up this week. On Sundays like this, we start with our pre-service prayers at 8.30 a.m., with our service starting promptly at 9 a.m. Still on Sundays, we meet in our house caring fellowship to share in smaller units. Make sure you see one of our ushers or leaders today to get connected to a fellowship unit. The Word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. That's why on Mondays, we have our Bible study at 6.20 p.m. During this time, our founder, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumi, dissects the Word of God for our understanding. We hope to see you there. If you are a senior citizen, I invite you to join us on Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. Thank you. I will see you there. While Jesus was on earth, he said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of heaven. All children are welcome to the Kids Bible Discussion every Thursday at 6 p.m. No child left behind. Youths. Get excited for our weekly fellowship every Thursday by 7 p.m. This is a great space to enjoy good fellowship and grow your relationship with Christ. We hope to see you there, and don't forget to invite your friends. Fridays are a time for our revival service, and as the name suggests, we gather to be revived, encouraged, and equipped in our journey towards heaven. Join us this Friday at 6.20 p.m. A reminder that every third week of the month is our community service week where we engage our community just like Jesus did. Be sure to be a part of all our community events this month. Offering time, blessing time. Blessing time is offering time. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 a tells us, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. If you've brought your tithes and offering, please bring them out now. Amen. If you brought your tithe and offering, please bring them out as we pray. I want to give you an answer. 
and it's in your purses and your pockets. Bring out your checks, your cash, or your phone if you want to sell your offering. As we pray, Father, we thank you for giving your children opportunity to sow, to give, to the furtherance of the gospel. Lord, we pray that our gift will be acceptable unto you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll give, take some few announcements, and then take our Bible reading. Thank you, Lord. All of my cares and worries, I lay them all aside so I can truly say thank you, Lord. The fasting in the morning is thank you, Lord. The last thing in the night. Is thank you, Lord. All of my cares and worries, I lay them all aside so I can truly say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What more can I give? But give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. All I am here to say is thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. We just want to remind us that our global crusade continues today. And um, whenever we have a global crusade, we usually have this regional event where we are in, encouraged to join through the Zoom link that is on our church um, WhatsApp group. So that comes up by 6 p.m. today, I mean the regional event. But the global crusade um, will probably the live one will start around 12 or 1, you can also join, and then we'll come back, circle back again by 6 p.m. to join for the regional program, for the regional event. This global crusade tagged the wonders of God's grace is very important that we partake in it, and it's going to come to a close on October 1st, that's um, next week, or this week, Tuesday, rather, and as we join, I believe the Lord is going to do something great in our lives. Praise the Lord. On Saturday, we'll be having something very important here. Saturday, October, um, the 5th of October, 2024. And that will start from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that is going to be our DMV quarterly prayer and fasting. So October 5th is on Saturday. We want you to try make our time to be here so that we all will make some phone calls to heaven. And I believe our phone calls will not hit any voicemail. The Lord will answer as we call and grant us much more than we can ever think or imagine in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Again, remember, October is here. Tuesday is October 1st. And who can remind me of something very important that is coming up in October. Convention. Convention is a great event where we gather at Kingston, North Carolina. And this year, the event is slated for October 17 to 20, 2024. And we don't just grab our bags and head on to Kingston. Preparations are required. And the preparation starts with you, it starts with me. The first preparation is to register. And I'm not sure how many people here have registered. Or maybe we are still in that valley of indecision, thinking, will I be able to go? Or maybe I won't be able to go. Brothers and sisters, the convention time, I want to believe, should be 
a time that is non-negotiable. We just have to make it happen. Fine, we know it was moved around and, you know, have to clash with some interest on our schedule. But when something is important to you, you try to make time for that event. Conversion is very important. I'm not saying that what you're doing is not important. And I'm not saying that maybe students should leave their school, parents should vacate their jobs and go to convention. But again, we'll look at it. I don't like saying this, but most of the time, that is what I want to use to encourage myself. If death comes knocking now, I don't think we want to tell Mr. Death, please give me some time. I have some work to do. I have some exam to take. <laughs> it's a non-negotiable uh, debt that we need to pay. So if we cannot postpone death, there are some things we just have to take the bull by the horn and say, hey, I think I want to make this happen. So brothers and sisters, we're only trying to encourage you. We're not commanding you or trying to compare you or probably uh, talk down on what you're doing, but it's an encouragement, my brethren. Let's try and make it happen. We know it's not easy, and we know the time is tight and times are hard, but when the times are tight, God has given us the power to have dominion. Amen. And it's time for us to exercise that dominion. That power to have that dominion, this is the time. Our schedule is under our control. Possibly, I believe so. So please and please and please, this is a time to attend this event, which is power packed, full of so many life transforming activities. You know, you want to start a business, you want to talk about career, you talk different things. It's going to be a powerful time in the presence of God. And we've got some, you know, highly anointed men of God and accomplished people who will be speaking to us there. So it's a time for you to go to test and see that the Lord is good. So brethren, let's make it a time and a date. That day, October 17 to 20, 2024. Then I want to ask you these questions. Two, three. Question number one. Have you registered? Amen. Okay. Maybe we'll do it this way. If I've not registered, no, if I've registered, I want to see my hands up. I've registered. Registered. Okay. Okay. I, I, maybe the, the link, I don't know, maybe Rokayo, they will help us repost the link again. Maybe some of our brethren don't have the link. That's why they've not registered. But I don't want, I, I, I'm not sure maybe you're not going, that's why you've not registered. But let's, let's make up our mind. Like they usually tell us where there is a will, there's a way. Plan around it, 